So last year I made a series of videos going over the history of Superman, and today we're going to compile them all into one convenient video. Enjoy as I go over the origins and bio of the 10 canon Superman. Kal-El was born on a planet called Krypton. When his father Jor-El discovered Krypton's imminent doom, he sent Superman to Earth in a specially designed rocket ship moments before this alien world was destroyed. The infant Kal-El's rocket landed in a small town on Earth called Smallville, where he was found and placed in an orphanage. A loving couple named John and Mary Kent adopted him and named the boy Clark. He soon discovered his powers and received training from a superhero named Superboy from another world. Kal-El was faster than a speeding bullet, strong enough to lift a car over his head, and able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Sadly, as Clark grew older, Mary Kent died, and when John Kent also grew sick, he had Clark promise to use his superpowers for the good of all. Taking heart from this promise, Kal-El adopted the identity of Superman and became the first true superhero of this world, beginning his career sometime in the late 1930s. Compared to the Superman of other worlds, Kal-El's powers took a long time to fully develop. Yet by the 1960s he learned to fly and gained abilities such as heat vision and frost breath, and experienced a massive increase in strength and durability, on a level comparable to other supermen from other worlds. This hero became a popular defender of his beloved home Metropolis, and the entirety of Earth too. Unique to other versions of Superman, Kal-El could also mold his face to look like other men of a similar build. He was a founding member of the Justice Society of America and worked with such heroes like Batman, Alan Scott, and Jay Garrick. He served as a hero for many years, battling villains such as Alexi Luthor, Mr. Mixie Spitalik, and the Wizard. As he grew older, Superman gradually began ceding this responsibility to other heroes, such as his cousin Kara, who adopted the superhero identity of Power Girl. Kal-El met and married Lois Lane, a reporter who only discovered the man's secret identity on their honeymoon. At this point, an aging Kal-El had largely retired his identity as Superman, living fully in secret as mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent, who worked at a newspaper publisher called the Daily Star. One day, a being called the Anti-Monitor threatened all of reality. A crisis across infinite Earths began, during which Kal-El's home of Earth 2 was destroyed. Enraged at the loss of his home and wife, Kal-El nearly went insane, but worked through this grief and was of vital importance in saving reality, landing the killing blow against the Anti-Monitor. In the aftermath of this battle, Alexander Luther Jr. of Another World managed to save Kal-El and his wife, taking them and another hero named Superboy Prime to a paradise pocket dimension where they could live out their lives in peace. The reality that emerged following this crisis of infinite Earths had all but forgotten these heroes of Earth 2. From this paradise, Kal-El would watch the new Earth that emerged out of this crisis. This idealistic hero grew increasingly disturbed by what he saw as a growing darkness in this new reality. Things weren't simple like when he was Superman, and he began to view the Superman of this new Earth as indecisive and hesitant, while the ills of the world were far more complex than the ones he endured. Meanwhile, Lois Lane began to fall ill in this pocket dimension. They escaped this world and emerged into the new Earth. Alexander Luther, meanwhile, had begun to recreate the multiverse in secret, and when he rebuilt Earth 2, he sent a grateful Kal-El, Lois, and the other heroes originally from there, back to it, much to the gratitude of this Superman. Sadly, Lois could not be saved, and she died in her husband's arms happy to have lived such a long and unique life. Nevertheless, Kal-El was enraged, attacking his New Earth counterpart and blaming the other Superman for everything that went wrong. Eventually, Kal-El realized he was being used by Superboy Prime and Alexander Luther Jr., and survived the events of yet another crisis. He worked with this younger Superman to defeat Doomsday, Bizarro, and later, an increasingly mad Superboy Prime. The latter, tormented and greatly empowered, managed to defeat Kal-El, viciously beating the hero and mortally wounding the man in the process. While Superboy was eventually defeated by the other new Superman, Kal-El died in Power Girl's arms. He affirmed that the new Superman is as true a hero as he ever was, 
and declares he will always be with his cousin, his last surviving relative. His last words were but a whisper. Lois. Kal-El was honored as a hero on New Earth, but his corpse was later used by the Black Lanterns for their own sinister purposes. He and a similarly undead version of his wife attacked Connor Kent before they were defeated. After the events of Convergence, Earth 2 was restored and Kal-El with it. However, the location of this world and Kal-El's whereabouts are currently unknown. So before we get any further into things, I do ask, if you're enjoying this video, to subscribe to our channel and check out our Patreon page in the video description below. Kal-El of Krypton was just three years old when his planet was destroyed. His father, Jor-El, was one of the few individuals that foresaw this destruction, and sent his son away to planet Earth. The alien child was found by an elderly couple named Jonathan and Martha Kent. They raised him as their own child in the town called Smallville, and named him Clark. The yellow sun of our world greatly empowered this young Clark Kent. It did not take long for him to begin using this power as a young superhero named Superboy, meeting and working with several other new and young heroes of his era, including the likes of Bruce Wayne, Oliver Queen, and Aquaboy. As a hero, he also first encountered and made an enemy of Lex Luthor, who would become his arch nemesis, while he also befriended the likes of Lana Lang, Pete Ross, and his Kryptonian dog, Crypto. It is this version of Superboy that had trained Kal-El of Earth 2, after finding himself on that world during one of his adventures. While this version of Superboy also traveled to the future for a time, working in the 30th century as part of the Legion of Superheroes. In the summer following Clark's graduation from high school, both of the Kents passed away. A saddened Clark decided to move on to the city of Metropolis, where he studied journalism at Metropolis University. He got a job as a reporter at the Daily Planet after this, working for Perry White, and there he met his co-workers Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane. As with other supermen, Clark and Lois had romantic feelings for one another and eventually started a romantic relationship. Upgrading his hero name to Superman, Clark continued to secretly fight crime as this hero and protect the world from threats such as Brainiac, Starro, and Kronos. During his career as a superhero, Kal-El met survivors of Krypton living in the bottled city of Kandor, who he helped settle on another planet, and also befriended his cousin who he helped settle on Earth and eventually would become this world's Supergirl. Superman, along with Batman, Wonder Woman, Barry Allen, Hal Jordan, Aquaman, and Martian Manhunter, together formed an alliance called the Justice League, a team dedicated to protecting the world from threats they could not handle individually. Batman in particular proved a close ally of Kal-El, and the two would often work together. They discovered each other's secret identities early on in their superhero careers, but agreed to keep this information to themselves. This bond of trust and teamwork proved formidable, and they formed a deep sense of respect for each other that lasted throughout their time as superheroes. Kal-El consistently worked to protect his world and universe right up until the crisis of Infinite Earths. This Superman found himself embroiled in a massive battle as a being called the Anti-Monitor tried to destroy all of reality, including alternate versions of Superman such as his old friend Kal-El of Earth 2. During this event, his version of Supergirl was tragically killed, and ultimately, most of reality was destroyed in this encounter. Thanks to the surviving heroes, including this version of Kal-El, the Anti-Monitor was defeated and a single universe was saved. Superman returned to this Earth and continued to operate as a hero, until he and his history were ultimately erased and converted into a new individual with a new history for this new Earth. This was an entirely different Superman who ultimately led a very different life from Kal-El of Earth-1. Yet a version of this Kal-El survived during the events of Convergence, when a being called Talos took over a collection of surviving cities collected by Brainiac before certain worlds were destroyed, throughout the history of the multiverse. This version of Kal-El was Superboy from when he was living in the 30th century. The final fate of this young hero is currently unknown. Many years ago, there was once a great planet called Krypton. Its people were highly advanced in their knowledge and technology, but its people found themselves genetically bound to their world. 
So they stayed on Krypton, for leaving their world would mean certain death for the Kryptonians. They became a troubled society, a world where emotions were looked down upon, and all children were genetically engineered. Natural birth was considered barbaric. When one scientist, a man named jor who rejected his society's views on passion and love, discovered the inevitable destruction of Krypton was close at hand, he administered a serum to Kal-El to allow him and a few others, including a dog named Krypto, to be able to escape Krypton's destruction unscathed. The infant Kal-El traveled through space in a specially designed craft, which was actually an augmented Kryptonian birthing matrix that hadn't quite finished growing the baby. It also included the means to regrow at least some remnant of Kryptonian civilization in the form of the Fortress of Solitude. Kal-El was discovered by Jonathan and Martha Kent in the town of Smallville. In this small community, Kal-El grew up as Clark Kent, an idealistic boy who discovered and developed his powers thanks to Kryptonian physiology's unique interaction with the properties of Earth's yellow sun. He became the hero Superman at age 25, and worked to protect his Earth from many threats, including a man he knew from childhood named Lex Luthor, who would go on to become Superman's greatest enemy. As a young man and later throughout his life on this Earth, Clark would work as a superhero traveling to the 31st century to work with a team called the Legion of Superheroes. It was during his early period as Superman that he first learned of his legacy as one of the last surviving Kryptonians. Throughout all of this, Clark remained close to his adoptive parents, though his father would die well into his career as Superman. This version of Kal-El grew incredibly powerful over time and developed a strong network of allies and friends. His appearance marked a break in a long-standing taboo within modern society concerning superheroes, as this world hadn't seen any since the Justice Society in the 1950s. Thus, when Superman first appeared, others would follow, and with the greatest among them, Superman founded the Justice League. He developed a close friendship with this world's Batman and later Wonder Woman as well. Though they faced dozens of villains, both mystical and scientific in origin, including the likes of Brainiac, Parasite, and Darkseid, to name a few, they were victorious time and time again. Over the years, many clones of Superman were created as Lex Luthor and others took an interest in the formidable power of Kryptonian DNA. Some of these clones would end up becoming reliable friends and allies, while others proved to be dangerous enemies. During a battle with one of Superman's many villains, a powerful creature raised on Krypton named Doomsday managed to actually overwhelm Superman and kill the hero. Though several successors tried to take up his mantle following Kal-El's disappearance, Superman was revived thanks to Kryptonian battle armor stored within the Fortress of Solitude. It restored the hero, and for many years after this, he continued protecting his Earth as Superman at the side of countless others. At one point, Superman's powers began to fluctuate and change, transforming him into a being of pure energy for a time before he eventually returned to normal. While on another occasion, he had to contend with Lex Luthor being elected president. Superman was also a vital combatant against the Black Lanterns, but due to his previous death, was nearly possessed by them until being briefly made a White Lantern. Throughout all these events, trials, and tribulations, Superman was instrumental in averting crisis after crisis that affected not only this world, but at times all of reality. He was an important factor in recovering the lost Kryptonian city of Kandor, and eventually rebuilding this wayward city at the North Pole by the Fortress of Solitude. Calling this settlement New Krypton, for a time it looked as though the Kryptonian people had a real chance at a future. Eventually, conflict with the native humans forced them to move the city to a newly created planetoid on the other side of the sun, away from Earth. Yet hope remained for the future of these Kryptonian survivors. This version of Superman grew very close to a woman and a reporter named Lois Lane, who he met as Clark Kent while working as a reporter himself for the Daily Planet. He eventually revealed his secret identity to her as the two fell in love with one another. During this time, they got married, however, over time, something made a strange and still not fully understood attack on this Earth. Wanting to weaken the bond between the superheroes of this planet, this mysterious being rewrote this reality into one where its superheroes were far less experienced at protecting this planet. 
Superman and Lois managed to escape this change in reality during the Convergence event, where they were held in a bottled version of their world's Gotham City. Without his powers, Kal-El spent years in hiding with Lois, raising their new son, who they named John, while Superman patrolled Gotham as a powerless, masked vigilante. Ultimately, Superman escaped this bottled city and was recruited to stop the final Crisis of Infinite Earths from ever happening, an act which he and his fellow heroes were apparently successful in completing, before he and Lois found themselves on a new world, the rewritten Earth with a new version of themselves living the lives they had once lived. For a time, this worked fine, as the Kent family simply spent years in hiding, content to let the other Superman and Lois Lane live their lives while they would quietly raise their family in peace. After all, there was a perfectly good Superman already protecting this Earth. They weren't needed, and John could live as a happy, anonymous child. All that eventually changed years later, when the new Superman died, and Lois Lane of this new world disappeared. Following this, the Lex Luthor of this world was inspired to become Superman himself. While this version of Lex Luthor was apparently genuinely trying to redeem himself and be a better person, Kal-El, his opinion of this man informed by the years of bitter conflict he faced with his version of Lex Luthor, could not accept this, and brought himself back as Superman to confront Luthor himself. Though this proved to be a difficult thing for many of the people of this new world to accept, as well as for the Kent family, who viewed the heroes of this world as virtual strangers, Kal-El proved as capable a superhero as ever, as much a Superman as the original one of this world ever was, though now one with a strong focus on keeping his family safe. Not long after returning to this life, Superman discovered that the other Superman that died had actually survived in some form, and ultimately, he and this new Superman merged into one being, as did Lois Lane. In an instant, the lives and history of this Superman and Lois were rewritten to accommodate both timelines. The people whose lives were most closely tied to Clark and Lois's, including related superheroes and their co-workers at the Daily Planet, now remember Superman and Clark Kent as they are, a happily married man with a child and a protector of this Earth. As far as all events involving Superman are concerned, he now exists across a merged timeline across two different worlds. This is the current version of Superman who protects Earth, and, it is believed, may be the only person who can truly save this world from whatever force altered the timeline in the first place. He is the most powerful being currently inhabiting Earth, and as such, whatever being that affected the timeline to begin with has taken a particular interest in Kal-El. For a time, this being had a certain influence over Jor-El, who was taken moments before Krypton's destruction and was used to carefully monitor and control this new Earth. Like Superman, this version of Jor-El was merged across the two timelines. Whatever being is involved in all these machinations, it is clear that this version of Superman is the central focus of this all-powerful enemy. His life and A man named John Henry Irons, parents were murdered when he was young, and since then, he had been driven to pursue wealth and accumulate power reasoning that such things would protect him from another tragedy like this ever happening again. Winning a sports scholarship, he went to Yale and became a ballistics expert, hired by a company called Ameritech Industries. He had earned the wealth and success he had sought and used this money to help his surviving relatives. However, he was horrified to learn that his work at Ameritech was being used by criminals and left the company in disgust working as a steelworker in Metropolis under an assumed name when he first encountered Superman. Superman fell to the might of the terrible villain known as Doomsday. John witnessed this event and was trapped in a collapsed building. In the weeks that followed the Man of Steel's death, John forged a suit of armor, boots to enable him to fly, an S emblem, and a cape in honor of the now deceased Superman. He began to pursue the source of where his weapons were being sold to criminals, and now in the public eye, he was identified as one of four potential candidates who were all thought to be potentially Superman returned to this world. Unlike the others, John always had the least amount of convincing evidence to support this, and he never personally claimed to be the superhero reincarnated. He did, however, take on the namesake of the Man of Steel. As a superhero, John declined an offer of employment from Lex Luthor and met Lois Lane, 
admitting to her that he was not the actual Superman, unlike the others that had claimed to be the real hero returned to life. He eventually ran into these imposters, including Superboy and a being called the Eradicator. With the latter, the two fought to a standstill until this being ultimately retreated from the battle. John managed to track down and stop his weapons from being used illegally, at least for the time, and chose to continue operating as a superhero. When Coast City was destroyed, Steele investigated personally, encountering the real Superman who was finally returned to life. Though the others were skeptical of all of this, given the number of imposters around, this Superman, now wearing a black costume, proved to be the hero once thought dead, and John worked with Superman to save several other cities from various threats. With Superman Return, John modified his codename to simply Steel, and spent years working with heroes such as Supergirl, the Justice League of America, and other heroes tied to Superman. This version of Steel is currently missing, after his Earth was rewritten into a new multiverse of 52 worlds. A new version of Steel currently operates on Earth Zero, with a similar personality and slightly modified backstory. But that version of Steel was never officially identified as Superman, just as a close ally of Kal-El. As of the Rebirth era, this version of Steel now bears a very similar resemblance to the original Steel, possibly reflecting the merged timelines that have incorporated the original John Henry Irons and his life into the current version of Steel along with everyone else involved in Superman's life. It's unclear if Steel was one of the others involved in Superman's life that had their timelines merged when Superman was reborn into an amalgamated version of the New 52 version and the older version of Superman. But whatever the case, this hero remains a steadfast ally of the Man of Steel and a protector of all mankind. Many years ago, a being called Cleric arrived on the planet Krypton. Discovering that these people use cloning as a means to reproduce, he spoke out against this technology, offering religious guidance and claiming that clones could not be born with souls. The Kryptonian Science Council and mining factions looked down on these views, seeing them as a threat to their way of life and power. In response, they built a device to preserve Kryptonian culture at all costs by eradicating all others. Thus, the Eradicator was born. Originally resembling a small rocket, it did all it could to protect Kryptonians, even from themselves. This device altered the Kryptonian birthing matrices that created all Kryptons, such that if any Kryptonian ever tried to leave Earth, they would immediately perish. When a group of Kryptonians managed to escape Krypton, the Eradicator altered their birthing matrices, from which all Kryptonians are born, so that they were now fatally allergic to lead, thus creating a new race known as the Daxamites. The rest of the Kryptonians were forced to remain on their world, right up until the planet's unexpected destruction. Cleric was able to eventually escape Krypton with the Eradicator, reprogramming the device for his own purposes. Feeling as though he failed the Kryptonian people, unable to prevent them from causing their own eventual destruction, he began to live a life in solitude. Cleric and the Eradicator lived like this for 200,000 years until they eventually encountered Superman on the planet War World. Learning that Superman was a Kryptonian named Kal-El, who escaped Krypton's destruction thanks to genetic modifications made by his father Jor-El, and of Superman's heroic and powerful nature, Cleric turned the Eradicator over to Superman before perishing, as this device was the only thing keeping the being alive for so long. The Eradicator was brought to Earth, where it caused a number of bizarre events, including turning Jimmy Olsen into a malleable form that caused the man extreme pain. The device attempted various schemes to transform Earth into a version of Krypton, each time stopped by Superman. In its attempt to rebuild Krypton, it even built a fortress, an early recreation of Kryptonian society that Superman would ultimately adopt as his home base, known as the Fortress of Solitude. Eventually, the machine was destroyed and dissipated into energy. Much later, Superman died in battle against Doomsday, and in response, the robots within Superman's Fortress of Solitude recreated the Eradicator from its residual energy, using Superman's body as a template. The experience briefly caused the Eradicator to believe he was Superman, and it was one of four candidates who emerged after the death of the real Superman. 
The Eradicator even went so far as to develop a copy of Superman's memories to further justify its own existence. This being proved to be a far more brutal version of the hero it claimed to replace, showing no hesitation to kill and mercilessly injure would-be criminals. Thanks to its origins, the being also had a unique ability to manipulate energy and control technology, while boasting a strong psychic ability and resistance. Though powerful, it began to reconsider its more brutal methods after a battle with the hero known as Steel. It left Metropolis now with a more heroic mindset and began protecting Coast City. That city was destroyed by the villains known as Mongol and Cyborg Superman. The Cyborg attempted to frame the Eradicator for this event, nearly destroying it in the process. The android returned to the Fortress of Solitude, regenerating itself and altering its appearance, while gaining a mindset more compassionate and closer to that of the original Superman. It returned to the ruins of Coast City, where it joined forces with Kal-El, who had returned to life, along with a number of other superheroes, to save Metropolis from the same fate at the hands of Mongol and Cyborg Superman. During this battle, the Eradicator was thought destroyed when it shielded Kal-El from an energy blast. Its remains were taken to Star Labs and were merged with a man named Dr. David Connor, who was dying of a fatal disease. This union gave them both a new chance at life, and it joined a superhero team called the Outsiders, while occasionally working with Superman as well. The Eradicator would function as a hero for the remainder of its life, eventually calling itself Krypton Man, though an older, villainous version of its AI still present on the Fortress of Solitude emerged on more than one occasion. Once, the legendary hero known as Superman fell to the might of the villain known as Doomsday. In response to this, a secret genetic engineering group known as Project Cadmus saw this as an opportunity to bring back the hero with an ambitious genetic engineering project unlike any ever done before. The group managed to procure two genetic samples, one from the recently deceased Superman and the other from Lex Luthor, though the latter's role in all of this was kept secret for years. Cadmus created a human clone with Kryptonian traits and artificially aged the resulting boy into a teenager, implanting him with the knowledge of an average high school student. The clone initially only possessed a telekinetic force field as a superpower that allowed him to roughly approximate some of Superman's abilities. This field gave him super strength, allowed him to fly at a top speed somewhere around Mach 5, could be used to deflect force fields and projectiles, destroy or disassemble objects via touch, be augmented into a telekinetic force that could be used as a projectile, and be used to hear sounds from a great distance. Over time, this clone would learn to apply this field in other ways, but it did leave him with a distinct vulnerability. The field was less effective at blocking heat and certain forms of energy. He possessed a number of genetic similarities to Kryptonians, including his ability to function as a sort of battery for solar energy, and possessed the same weakness Superman had to kryptonite. However, other aspects of this clone's physiology did not behave the same way as a normal Kryptonian. Cadmus theorized that as this new being reached adulthood, he would grow to develop Kryptonian strength and abilities. To what extent this strength would manifest, only time would tell. The clone was quickly set free from Cadmus' custody by a group of adventurous children known as the Newsboy Legion. One of the boys gave the clone a leather jacket, and the young man set out to Metropolis. The young man's arrival at the city occurred at the same time as when three others emerged, and all four of these individuals were viewed as being potentially a version of Superman returned to life. While the Eradicator and Cyborg Superman both claimed they were the real Superman, Steel made no such claim, and the clone was upfront about his origins as a genetic copy of the original Superman, as he understood it. When he met Lois Lane, the only thing he insisted was that he not be called Superboy. Telling anyone who would listen he was simply a clone, he set out to be the new protector of Metropolis. However, the relatively young Superman was completely inexperienced, and found himself unprepared for the challenge of being a superhero. Though he loved the attention, he was often naive and reckless in his behavior. He managed to get corporate sponsorship, but his actions led to the death of a helicopter pilot. The newly emerged hero Steel harshly rebuked Superman for this, 
and the young hero took Steel's lesson to heart. He repaid this kindness when he later saved the Man of Steel during a fire. Superman worked as a hero for a time, getting some additional advice from the hero called the Guardian, and teaming up with Supergirl to save many people during a battle with an assassin called Stinger, not realizing that Superman himself had provoked this incident when he approached a young reporter named Tana and her boss hired the assassin in an attempt to drum up ratings. When Superman heard of Coast City being destroyed, he rushed to the scene where he found Cyborg Superman. The villain, secretly responsible for the city's destruction, tricked the young man, trapping him and using the footage to also trick the Justice League into going off-planet on a pointless mission, leaving Metropolis exposed in Cyborg Superman's mad quest for destruction. Superman was able to escape back to Metropolis, warning Steel, Supergirl, Lex Luthor, and Lois Lane of the oncoming destruction and Cyborg Superman's role in it. The group was surprised when the original Superman suddenly returned, and together they were able to defeat Cyborg Superman and his gathered forces. With the original return to life, the clone acknowledged that the one true Superman was back, and relinquished his claim to the title much to the ire of his corporate sponsors. Finally accepting the name Superboy, he decided to leave Metropolis and find his own way in the world with his new identity. He gave up his apartment to the mild-mannered reporter known as Clark Kent. The clone returned to Cadmus and learned more about his origins before persuading them not to pursue making any more clones. Superboy began traveling the world before he found himself in Hawaii, and he began to carve a life here with some friends he met. He became a hero and protector of the islands, enjoying the unofficial title as Hawaii's protector and finding himself gradually building a rogues gallery of his own villains, including King Shark, Silver Sword, and a crazed man known as Scavenger. During the time, Superboy met and worked with many heroes and factions, such as Supergirl, the Suicide Squad, and the Legion of Superheroes. With the latter, Superboy traveled in time to the 30th century, where he was made an honorary legionnaire for his help before being sent back home. Eventually, he was asked to take on the Kryptonian dog known as Crypto. Superboy reluctantly took the young dog in, though often passed off the responsibility to friends and neighbors. For a time, he also got a special visor that allowed him to replicate a version of Superman's heat vision. Superboy also began dating Tana for some time, the reporter he first met as Superman in Metropolis. During a battle with Scavenger, Superboy was left extremely sick, and the young man nearly died due to a disease specifically affecting clones created by the Cadmus Project. He survived this, but was upset to learn the effects of it all would leave him permanently in the body of a 16-year-old, never to grow older. With Superman's encouragement, he returned to Hawaii after this, only for the life he had set up for himself to slowly fall apart. A second encounter with the Legion of Superheroes proved far more tense than the first, and Tana grew frustrated breaking up with him and leaving the islands. When the villain Silver Sword was killed by a being known as Pele during an encounter with Superboy, and with waning public approval of the hero among the people of Hawaii, Superboy began to feel alone and adrift. He disappeared for a time, vanishing after he was caught in a violent storm out in the Pacific Ocean. Superboy found himself trapped on a strange island of anthropomorphic animal men, and managed to escape with some other humans. He returned to Hawaii only to find his friends were gone, all having moved on after Connor's disappearance. Superboy decided it was best he did the same. He joined back up with Cadmus, working as an agent alongside his old contacts Guardian, the Newsboy Legion, and another clone named Double X leaving Crypto behind with his friend, Hilary Chang. For a time, Connor found happiness once more, only to be disillusioned when the Newsboy Legion and their clones were fired from the Cadmus Project. It was then that Superboy decided to join a superhero team, and he became a founding member of Young Justice, along with Tim Drake and Impulse. The three worked past some initial interpersonal issues and quickly became best friends. During this time, he was invited to the Fortress of Solitude by Superman, where the hero gifted the young clone the Kryptonian name of Connell. He felt this name was fitting, as the real Kryptonian that bore this name 
was given honorary status among the House of El by Superman's father, Jor-El. For doing such good works in life, they welcomed him into his family. And Superman felt this gesture marked the same occasion as Superman welcomed Superboy into his inner circle. And eventually, he would also take on the human identity of Connor Kent. This was a profound and deeply moving moment for Superboy, as it gave him new meaning, direction, and a true sense of belonging, given his unusual origins. To him, it was the first real sign of Superman accepting him as a real Kryptonian. As both part of the Young Justice team and independently, Superboy continued as a hero, with more focus and confidence than ever before. He even began working closer with Superman. Much to the young man's frustration though, Superman still hadn't divulged his secret identity. It was only after Connor's wayward love Tana was killed that Superman finally revealed his alter ego as Clark Kent. While the experience had briefly turned Connor into an adult with Kryptonian powers. When he was returned back to normal, he was surprised to find himself completely powerless. Although he tried to take this opportunity to live a normal life, the recent loss of Tana and the rapid change of it all left him wanting to remain as Superboy. Using a special ring that gave him the power of flight, courtesy of the Legion of Superheroes, and a special shield, Superboy began training with Guardian, intent on operating as a powerless superhero. However, he barely got through training before his powers were restored. Gifting his brand new, nearly invulnerable shield to Guardian, Superboy returned to form, working once more as a full-fledged superhero with both Young Justice and the Cadmus Project. However, when he was pulled into a war with a cosmic entity known as Imerex, he and the rest of Young Justice were sent to Apocalypse on a special mission. They were captured by the sinister and violent Granny Goodness, and though the team did eventually escape, the young man witnessed death and destruction on a level he had not quite experienced before, and watched many of his friends suffer just as badly, if not worse. Superboy went to the Kent farm to recover, but was left troubled by these events. Project Cadmus had been shut down under order of then-president Lex Luthor, while Young Justice was dissolved not long after that. So Superman urged the struggling young clone to stay with Kal-El's adoptive parents at the Kent farm, a request Connor fulfilled for some time. When he was later offered a position on the Teen Titans, Connor accepted. It was during this time as a Titan that Connor first began experiencing signs of his Kryptonian powers emerging. Connor began to doubt himself more and more though, especially after learning that the basis for his human DNA was none other than Lex Luthor. Once again, Connor retreated back to the comfortable refuge of Smallville, and the warm support of a loving family he had never known in life before then. There he stayed for some time until he was confronted by a Superboy from another universe known as Superboy Prime. This young man had become deeply disturbed and was intent on returning the multiverse back into existence as, at this point in history, it no longer existed. There was only one world, and up until then, only one Superboy. The two versions of Superboy fought, but Connor was badly outmatched. He briefly managed to get help from his allies, who pulled Superboy Prime into the Speed Force, but it wasn't enough. Connor was killed attempting to take down Superboy Prime, and died in the arms of his teammate Wonder Girl, proud at having saved the world. Connor was mourned and buried along with the others who died during this event. A cult was even started in his name, with the hope the young man would return to life as Superman once did. Their wishes did eventually come true, as Connor's body was rebuilt in the 31st century by the Legion of Superheroes. Connor returned to the present day with his friend Impulse, and Superboy returned as a superhero once more. During the Blackest Night, Connor's death made him an easy target for the Black Lanterns. Though he was briefly possessed by a Black Lantern ring, the fact that Connor was resurrected in the future allowed Wonder Girl to confuse the Black Ring with his remains in the present. In doing so, they were able to destroy the evil ring. From here, Connor returned to working as a Teen Titan while trying to make a life for himself, this time in the place it seems he found the most comfort and meaning in life, the town of Smallville. There he remained, operating as a superhero and building bonds with new friends, until this version of the world disappeared. 
Hank Henshaw was a brilliant human scientist who had earned himself a position as an astronaut for an expedition funded by LexCorp. He piloted a shuttle known as the Excalibur with three other crew members, including Hank's wife, Terry. When they successfully reached orbit around Earth, they were exposed to cosmic radiation. Their shuttle crashed, and two of the crew members found their bodies remade into strange forms. One became formed entirely of pure cosmic radiation, the other into an unusual body made of rock, gravel, and branches. Hank and Terry survived the crash with no apparent side effects other than Hank's hair turning white. They took their fellow crew members back to Metropolis, where they hoped to use the LexCorp facilities to help their friends. The four encountered Superman and got into a fight with him due to a misunderstanding. Though they resolved this conflict, Hank and his wife began to feel the side effects of the cosmic radiation. Hank's flesh began to fall off the man's bones, while Terry started to fade from existence entirely and the two other crew members killed themselves after both suffering psychotic breaks. Hank passed away just as he found a cure for himself and his wife. Superman was able to use Hank's work to save Terry, the sole survivor of this traumatic incident. In response, the woman was institutionalized, not knowing that while Hank's body died, his mind survived. It had been converted into energy thanks to the radiation, and he managed to send himself into a machine before his death. Now possessing a robotic body, Hank sought Terry out, only to inadvertently scare her in his new form. Not wanting to cause her any more grief, Hank decided to leave Earth for good, seeking out Superman's Kryptonian birthing matrix and using it to grow himself a new body. Superman tried to stop the man, but Hank escaped, flying away and for a time, exploring the cosmos on his own. He was, at first, a peaceful explorer, interested only in learning more about the universe around him. However, the cosmic radiation, the extreme nature of the Excalibur tragedy, and the effects of Hank's new semi-Kryptonian body led to the man now viewing himself only as a being called Cyborg Superman. The trauma of it all caused Hank to go insane. His origins are often distorted by this insanity, with Hank having convinced himself that Superman is largely responsible for what happened to the astronaut. While in truth, it really was nothing more than a freak accident. Hank's altered body gave him control over a great deal of technology, able to morph machines and computers and use them to his will. He also gained many aspects of Superman's powers, thanks to the birthing matrix creating flesh parts truly made from Kal-El's own DNA. As a result, he is very much as strong as any Kryptonian under a yellow sun, but with the added ability to augment his body further thanks to his cybernetic implants. As such, Hank removed his kryptonite weakness, and while his body could theoretically still die, his mind, which exists still in the form of pure energy, is effectively immortal. In spite of Hank's own growing desires to just die, as his existence was becoming increasingly tortured, and distorted by his deteriorating mind. In space, a now corrupted cyborg Superman encountered Mongol, and enslaved the alien for his own purposes. He returned to Earth at a time when Superman apparently died, and posed as one of four possible individuals who were each thought of as Superman potentially returned to life. He often secretly worked for his own purposes while pretending to be Superman during this time, for example, when he encountered Doomsday, the villain that killed the original Superman, Hank threw the being into space, seemingly defeating it, but really using it as an excuse to plant a tracker on the villain so he'd always know Doomsday's location and would be able to use the villain later for his own purposes. With the goal of ultimately corrupting Superman's image, Hank did appear to work as a superhero for a time and did save a number of people during this period. In truth, he was solely focused on his own psychotic plans and brought an alien ship to Coast City, wanting to remake this settlement in his image and to erase the memory of his wife, who was from this city. Cyborg Superman destroyed the entire city and every single one of its 7 million inhabitants. This act was one of the most successful blows any villain had ever inflicted on this earth, and the effects of this would be felt for decades. Cyborg Superman tried to frame the Eradicator as the culprit for the city's destruction, and nearly destroyed the android in the process, before setting his sights on his next target. 
Metropolis. He nearly succeeded at destroying this city as well, stopped only by the combined efforts of Superboy, Supergirl, Steel, a rebuilt Eradicator, and Superman himself, who was, at long last, returned to life. Though defeated, Cyborg Superman would be a continued enemy of Superman and other heroes, often using other villains and sources of power to attempt to overcome his many enemies. He used the tracker on Doomsday and the villain himself to take over the new god's world of Apocalypse. He nearly succeeded, even defeating Darkseid thanks to Doomsday's power, but was eventually stopped by Superman once again. In another incident, Cyborg Superman successfully took over the longtime enemies of the Green Lanterns known as the Manhunters, and upgraded them with Kryptonian technology. The Green Lantern Corps stopped him, and he saw for himself the power of their rings. He was imprisoned by the Green Lanterns on their home world of Oa. When Sinestro created his own core based on the power of fear, the newly Christian Yellow Lanterns attacked Oa, freeing many prisoners held there. Cyborg Superman was among them, and he joined forces with the Sinestro Corps. Hank made a deal with the Anti-Monitor, an ally of the Sinestro Corps, that if he helped them, the Anti-Monitor would do what Hal Jordan and Superman couldn't, and finally end Hank's miserable and insane life. Arming the Cyborg with an astounding ten Sinestro Corps rings, the Yellow Lanterns attacked Earth, with Hank ordered to handle the Justice League himself. With such increased power, Cyborg Superman proved more than a match for the League, including Superman, and was only stopped when the Kryptonian was assisted by Supergirl and Power Girl. The three Kryptonians combined managed to overpower the Cyborg, and, when the forces of the Yellow Lanterns were ultimately defeated, Hank Henshaw was killed, thankful to the Green Lanterns for finally granting him his greatest wish. However, much to his own dismay, the Manhunters managed to retrieve his head and reanimate it, so Cyborg Superman returned to life once more. He battled heroes such as Booster Gold and Kyle Rayner before coming into conflict with Superman once again, where he was again defeated by his longtime enemy and finally sent into custody with Star Labs. Born in 1984 on the planet Krypton, the child of Laura Lorvan and Jor-El. Kal-El was only an infant when his father predicted their planet was almost certainly doomed. Jor-El tried to flee to the Phantom Zone with his family, only to be repelled by the Kryptonian prisoners held there. With no other choice, Jor-El placed his son in a prototype rocket, activating its Brainiac intelligence and sending it to the planet Earth. The crash site was discovered by Jonathan and Martha Kent, who took the infant in, leaving behind a stillborn calf at the landing site in order to ensure the government wouldn't go looking for any survivor of this alien wreckage. They raised the boy as their son, Clark Kent, teaching him their values and ideals, before eventually revealing his true origins, leaving the growing young man to decide what to do with this information on his own. Clark grew older, living a happy and loving existence while adapting to his phenomenal power, gifted to him by the energy from Earth's yellow sun. He sparked a serious relationship with a young woman named Lana Lang, with whom he spent a lot of time discovering his powers. During the night of Clark's prom, Jonathan and Martha were killed, perishing in a car accident. After their funerals, a mournful Clark Kent gave the Kent farm away to a family friend in need, whose family had recently lost their own home, and Clark Kent moved on to Metropolis, intent on becoming a journalist. He got a job at the Daily Star working for editor Perry White, where he met co-workers such as photographer James Olson and reporter Lois Lane. Outside of this, Clark began to dabble in vigilantism for the first time rescuing a handful of people, including a number of survivors of the Zero Year disaster in Gotham City, and wearing a series of t-shirts with an S emblem fixed to them, he gradually became a public figure in Metropolis, and eventually earned the moniker of Superman, one of the first superheroes to emerge in this world. However, early on in his career as a hero, the Man of Steel was captured by the government, and the powerful, well-connected businessman known as Lex Luthor. With the Kryptonian rocket Kal-El had arrived on this planet with at hand, Luther began to torture Superman for information. 
The hero managed to escape and seal the rocket away. Though DNA samples acquired from Superman allowed Luther to construct a number of clones because of this event. Before the rocket was taken by Superman, it had emitted a signal, attracting the attention of the Collector of Worlds. A sinister being that infects the infrastructure of worlds before stealing a city from the planet. On Earth, he would attack the internet, but on Krypton, he attacked a network known as Brainiac revealing to have stolen away the Kryptonian city of Kandor and stealing away parts of Metropolis, this collector tried to force Superman to decide between the two settlements. Instead, using a Kryptonian armor from one of the bottled cities, Superman vowed to protect both. He defeated this being and restored the part of Metropolis that was lost. In doing so, he became a hero to the people of the city, while he reprogrammed the collector's ship into becoming his Fortress of Solitude. It stayed in orbit around Earth for some time, with Kandor kept there until it could be freed. Eventually, this fortress was moved to the North Pole. Not long after this, Superman met Batman for the first time while the Man of Steel was investigating a series of murders committed at Wayne Enterprises. But their memory of the event was ultimately wiped. It was not until an invasion by the forces of Apocalypse that Batman and Superman would first truly work together. This event was a full-scale attack by Darkseid, ruler of Apocalypse and powerful new god, and he nearly overran the entire planet. Superman was captured by Darkseid and taken to Apocalypse, rescued by Batman in a daring mission, while a group of other prominent superheroes stayed behind to protect Earth. Together, the two escaped Darkseid's hellish planet before they returned home to help the others. Superman was able to knock Darkseid through a portal created by the hero Cyborg ending the invasion and saving the world. The heroes involved in this event were personally thanked by the President of the United States for this, and the gathered heroes decided to become a team to protect Earth against threats they could not handle individually. David Graves, a historian who witnessed the invasion firsthand, would ultimately come up with a name for this team, the Justice League. From here, Superman began operating as a hero in force, while dealing with the challenges associated with preserving his secret identity. At one point, he had to publicly kill off Clark Kent to avoid suspicion, and the whole incident was only resolved once a fifth dimensional imp rewrote reality to undo the entire affair. The Daily Star was bought out, becoming the Daily Planet, and due to changes in company philosophy, Clark Kent quit, becoming an independent blogger. Meanwhile, Lois Lane, who Clark Kent was interested in, had begun dating someone else. Superman later met and would work with a teenaged, half-human clone of himself known as Superboy, as well as other Kryptonians that survived Krypton's destruction, such as Cal's cousin Kara, who adopted the identity of Supergirl, and a Kryptonian named Hell. The latter, despite his bid to revive Krypton, threatened to destroy Earth's entire solar system in the process. Hell was only stopped by the combined efforts of Superboy, Superman, and the Justice League. The Man of Steel would go on to battle and defeat a number of other enemies, including a beast called Wraith, the powerful telepath known as Hector Hammond, and the monstrous being known as Doomsday. His growing animosity with Lex Luthor only grew worse, as the man sent kryptonite-enhanced soldiers to kill the Man of Steel, while Luthor began rising in both power and popularity. Meanwhile, Batman and Superman kept working together, forging an alliance of deep trust in one another. Superman also began a romantic relationship with Wonder Woman, and the two powerful individuals began working closely together while falling in love with one another. Later, the Man of Steel got caught up in a battle with a number of other active Justice League rosters when a being called Pandora had approached the League. During this incident, known as the Trinity War, Superman accidentally killed Dr. Light. A despondent Clark turned himself in, where it was discovered the death was the result of an accident. Microscopic samples of kryptonite had somehow found itself in Superman's brain, creating instability within the hero. Before Superman's allies could act, however, it was discovered that this was an intentional act from Atomica, a spy working on behalf of the crime syndicate, an evil and corrupt version of the Justice League from another universe. With Superman incapacitated by this kryptonite, these villains invaded Earth, only stopped by Lex Luthor and a band of native criminals. They saved Superman, and Luthor, enjoying the feeling of being a hero, offered to save the life of his one-time enemy, to remove the kryptonite from his brain. 
Having discovered Batman's secret identity during this entire event, Luther managed to use this information to blackmail himself a spot on the Justice League. Superman later discovered the villain Doomsday on a rampage. Learning it harbored a dangerous virus, Superman ripped the monster in half, using his super breath to inhale the toxic substance, protecting anyone else from being infected. Kal-El was not so lucky, and he began to transform into a creature resembling Doomsday. Though Wonder Woman tried to help him, Superman could not stop the transformation and was locked in a special facility. When the Teen Titans needed his help, he was released and decimated their foe. The government declared Superman an enemy in response to this, sending villains such as Metallo and Atomic Skull. Superman was helped by a fellow superhero named Steel, but a suicide attack by Metallo left Superman weakened by the kryptonite infused in that villain's body accelerating his transformation into a doomsday-like being. Losing control, Superman was able to help the Justice League fight off another Brainiac invasion, only for him to completely succumb to the virus. He was only saved at last minute by Lois Lane, who helped Superman use Brainiac's technology to cure himself of the doomsday virus. The hero took Brainiac and sent him into a black hole, leaving Earth for two full months, during which Superman was confronted by a being called the Brainiac God and would later witness the Convergence event with Supergirl as a result of this. Upon his return home, he took up his old life, resuming his relationship with Wonder Woman and once again focused on helping others. His blog, which had languished in his absence, was left abandoned, and instead he took his old job back at the Daily Planet, only for things to go awry. After an encounter with a stranger named Ulysses, Superman's powers began to fail. Superman was also alarmed to find that his public identity as Clark Kent was exposed to the world, this time for good. When the Justice League became embroiled in a war between Darkseid and a being called Mobius, Superman's powers once again faded away on the world of Apocalypse. Luther dropped him into the pits made of solar energy in an attempt to restore the hero, and Superman was corrupted by its negative power. He slaughtered a number of parademons before turning on Luther torturing the man before abandoning him on the harsh world belonging to Darkseid. Though he returned to Metropolis, he could sense his broken psyche and realized he needed help. He returned to the conflict and was able to expel the evil energy in a battle against Mobius. Though the Justice League ultimately proved successful in protecting their Earth, the experience did catastrophic damage to Superman's body. Now, with barely any superpowers at all, Clark did his best to operate as Superman though he faced many challenges with his secret identity now being public knowledge. Eventually, during an attack from Vandal Savage, Clark grew so desperate to get his powers back he exposed himself to a great deal of kryptonite. Though this worked in empowering the superhero, it seems this was the final act needed to push Clark's already unstable body towards a complete and total failure. Following yet another devastating battle, this time with a being who was once worshipped by the Kryptonians as a god, known as Rao. Superman came to the dark realization that no matter what he did next, he was going to die. In an attempt to come to terms with this, he decided to get his affairs in order, first seeking out friends and those he held dear to his heart. He started with Lana Lang, making it clear that he wanted to be buried with his adopted parents. He then revealed everything about himself to Lois Lane asking her only to publish his information after his death. He sought out Batman to help him find a successor, and the two agreed to seek out Supergirl for that very purpose. Next, he told Diana everything as well, and they spent a moment together before they were called into action once more. A strange man of energy resembling Superman named Danny Swan attacked another version of Superman who had apparently survived from an older timeline and escaped to this Earth with his family. His wife, Lois Lane, also of another world, and their son, Jonathan. With Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Steel, and Batman, the two Supermen confronted Denny, who was preparing to release a massive amount of solar radiation. Given that he was dying, Superman of this world voluntarily flew Swan up into the sky, and when he exploded, the hero did his best to absorb the resulting energy. Though successful, it was too much for the dying Kryptonian, who fell back down to Earth. Surrounded by friends, family, and the woman that he loved, Kal-El said goodbye to all of them, before the hero died, his body disintegrating into ash after a flare of energy. 
The other Superman from the other timeline eventually agreed to replace the Superman of this world, after Lex Luthor took up the name Superman for himself in honor of the fallen hero. Yet a number of questions remained about all of this. A new, seemingly powerless version of Clark Kent emerged after this event. And though this was useful in easing back now public knowledge of Superman's real identity, the other version of Superman and Lois Lane were disturbed by this mysterious happening. To make matters even more concerning, the Lois Lane of this world disappeared with the Superman of this one as well, apparently dissolving in the same energy that Kal-El did. The Kent family eventually learned that much of this was the result of an old enemy of Superman, another fifth dimensional being known as Mr. Mixie Spitalik. This being revealed that the two versions of Superman were actually one being, split in two by a mysterious force meddling with the timeline of Earth. The same thing happened to Lois. In confronting this extremely powerful imp, Lois and Clark were merged across both timelines, meaning the new 52 version of Superman and all the events surrounding his life have been incorporated into the current version of Superman and his timeline. As such, the current version of Superman is as much this version of Superman as the one that had grown a family and been living and hiding on this Earth for years. Now merged, the family moved to Metropolis and resumed a life together in relative peace. Facing many villains after this, Superman was eventually confronted by a being that had been plaguing him for months since he had taken over and resumed a public life with his family. This being, known only as Mr. Oz, had taken intense interest in the entire Kent family, often manipulating events to his own mysterious purposes, such as through the use of the villain Doomsday who had mysteriously reappeared, or destroying a cybernetic version of Kal-El's biological uncle. It was only at this point, after months of this mysterious behavior, that Mr. Oz had finally revealed himself to Superman after causing a number of disasters on Earth. Mr. Oz shocked Superman with his true identity, that of Superman's biological father, Jor-El, taken away from Krypton mere moments before the planet was destroyed by the same mysterious being mentioned by Mr. Mixie Spitalik. Jor-El was irrational, insisting on Kryptonian superiority and outraged at Kyle's apparent affinity for what he viewed as inferior beings in the human race. When Superman destroyed Jor-El's staff, it appeared to clear the man's head and he briefly came to his senses, only for him to be ripped away by the same mysterious force as before. Superman was able to confirm the nature of these events thanks to a time-traveling mission with Booster Gold, where he witnessed a timeline where Krypton wasn't destroyed, as well as jor being taken in his own timeline moments before the planet's destruction. The Kent family was then approached by jor once more, this time with the man seemingly much more stable. He wanted and insisted on helping John, who jor had taken an interest in and desired to help the boy discover who he is by traveling to the galaxy with him. John, worried about a future timeline he had learned about from a time-traveling Tim Drake, agreed to go, worried about the kind of person he might one day become. Lois and Clark were understandably worried and not exactly eager to trust jor so the man offered all of them to come along. Superman, unwilling to leave Earth behind, reluctantly consented to Lois and John going on the journey without him. Though they left behind a communicator, it was destroyed shortly after this, and Superman hasn't heard from the family since. Kal-El later investigated some fires only to learn of an attack on the Fortress of Solitude. The entire complex was destroyed, including, much to Kal-El and Supergirl's dismay, the bottled city of Kandor. This devastating loss was at the hands of an alien named Rogel Zar who claims to have destroyed Krypton and is intent on wiping out all Kryptonian life. Superman and Supergirl teamed up to defeat this being, but even with the Justice League's help, he proved a powerful individual, and Superman knew this being would stop at nothing to destroy every trace of the Kryptonians, including the Earth itself. Kara and Kal managed to send Rogal into the Phantom Zone, but it appears the alien was able to quickly escape through another portal immediately after this. Supergirl set out to find answers while Kal remained home to protect Metropolis. Before she left, however, with the Justice League, a mournful vigil was set up for Kandor. Not long after this, a boy reported it into the fire department. He saw who was starting the fires for himself. He doesn't know why. He thought it had to be for good reason. But according to the television, it's not. But he saw it with his own eyes, nonetheless. Superman started those fires. 
Born and raised in Smallville, Kansas, Lex Luthor lived with his ill sister, Lena. Seeing her struggling health, Luthor vowed to one day find a cure for the young girl. As he grew into adulthood, Lex moved to Metropolis, founding a company named LexCorp and gaining reputation for being a man who can solve problems thanks to his profound intellect. Luther also took an intense interest in alien life and technology. He managed to make contact with a sinister being called the Collector of Worlds, exchanging information about Earth for advanced technology. Lex's growing reputation as an expert in alien tech led him to be recruited into a special government program designed to investigate a mysterious new being that emerged in Metropolis, who the press had taken to calling Superman. Luther would study a vessel found by the secret government organization that Superman was fought to arrive on on Earth as an infant, as well as studying Superman himself when he was captured and tortured by this clandestine organization. Superman managed to escape with his vessel before Luther decided to betray the group. Luther stole a cache of a powerful substance that was found to weaken Superman, known as Kryptonite. Lex then leaked the full story of what happened to a reporter named Clark Kent, protecting himself by exposing this secret organization to the world. When the Collector of Worlds invaded and stole a portion of Metropolis, this being was defeated but Luther was able to escape any prosecution thanks to a lack of evidence incriminating him. Over the next few years, Luther and his company would rapidly rise in prominence within Metropolis, granting the man a great deal of power and prestige over the city. Luther became annoyed with Superman who he believed was interfering with his business and would plan a number of schemes to attack the hero over the years. Meanwhile, superheroes such as Superman rose to prominence and fame, including a team of them called the Justice League, who stopped an invasion from a powerful being called Darkseid, and in doing so, they became widely considered the guardians of this world. After about four years following the Justice League's formation, Luther personally instigated an American invasion of Karak, so that he could sell powerful weaponry back to the foreign country. This put him, for the first time, in direct conflict with Superman, and Luther was detained thanks to the Man of Steel's actions. Luther was physically scarred because of this event and was kept in prison for a year. When Lex was finally released, he returned to his life in Metropolis, only to immediately witness the crime syndicate invading Earth in force. Though these villains from another universe declared all criminals were free to walk the Earth, had surreptitiously inserted kryptonite into Superman's brain and managed to imprison most other members of the Justice League. Luther was unwilling to accept these invaders controlling what he viewed was his world. He activated a project he had been working on for some time, an incomplete clone of Superman he nicknamed Bizarro, and the two recruited a team of villains to oppose the crime syndicate, as well as working with one of the last members of the Justice League still standing, Batman. Together they formed a team Luther dubbed the Injustice League and attacked the crime syndicate head on only for Luther to encounter an alternate version of himself from the crime syndicate's home world named Mazas. Mazas's enormous power quickly overwhelmed and killed the Bizarro clone, much to Luther's dismay. But this alternate version of Lex was no match for Luther or his quick wits, and Lex was able to kill his counterpart, firmly ending the crime syndicate's invasion. The Justice League was freed and Luther personally saved Superman's life while the Injustice League as a whole was regarded as heroes. They were all given pardons for their past crimes, and though most simply laughed the absurdity of this entire situation off, Lex seemed to really enjoy the experience of being a hero, and decided to honestly take a shot at redemption. He tried to join the Justice League but was immediately rebuffed, even after Luther revealed he had discovered Batman's secret identity based on their time working together to fight the crime syndicate. Eventually, after the team realized Luther was going to try and be a superhero no matter what they did, the Justice League reluctantly invited Luther to join their roster, along with another villain seeking to redeem himself named Captain Cold. The team would work together in dealing with the power ring that had come to Earth with the crime syndicate after it joined with a woman on their Earth named Jessica Cruz, who would join the Justice League as well. Luther was also instrumental in defeating an assassin named Neutron, a powerful being called Doomsday, and a sinister virus called Amazo. However, Luther's first real challenge as a member of the Justice League came when the team was drawn into a war between the Anti-Monitor and Darkseid. Luther and Superman were stranded on Apocalypse by Lex's sister, 
after she was exposed to a powerful piece of New God's technology called the Mother Box, which apparently drove her insane. On this dark world, Superman was corrupted by its negative energy. To the extent the Man of Steel attacked, tortured, and abandoned Luther on this harsh and dangerous planet. Luther managed to survive until Darkseid was killed by the Anti-Monitor, and Lex managed to absorb a large amount of the New God's energy, gaining a great deal of power. He declared himself the God of Apocalypse and the new Darkseid. Though Darkseid was resurrected, he and the Anti-Monitor were defeated and the war was brought to an end. Luther managed to retain control of Apocalypse in spite of losing his new powers, and he was presented with a new symbol for himself by his followers, as well as one of the very powerful Mother Boxes. Though this left Luther stronger than ever before, he elected to leave it all behind, save for his new Mother Box. When he returned to Earth, he was surprised to learn that in his absence, Superman had passed away. He bought out the Daily Planet specifically so he could get a hold of Superman's original cape, and vowed, in honor of what was once his greatest enemy, to become the new Superman and the new Guardian of Metropolis. Though Lex appeared to have been genuine in his desire to help and replace the Man of Steel, it did not sit well with another, older version of Superman from an older timeline that had mysteriously vanished. This other Superman, who was married to a Lois Lane from their world, and had a child together named John, had been living on this world in secret for some time. When the other Superman died and Luther took that Superman's place, the Superman of the older timeline was unwilling to accept living in the shadows any longer. He confronted Luther and chose to become the Superman of this world once more, though Lex was unwilling to abandon the name either. As Lex hadn't actually done anything wrong, the two agreed to a sort of truce and would occasionally even work together as heroes. This new Superman even came to Luther's defense when he was arrested by two aliens who claim Luther will one day become the new Darkseid, this time for good. Yet a bond of trust would never truly be built between these two superheroes. Not long after this, Luther and all his life events were merged with the older timeline, along with all others involved in life of Superman, due to the meddling of a fifth dimensional imp named Mr. Mixie Spitalik. Though he still remained intent on being a hero, this seemed to bring the trust issues between Superman and Luther to a head, and Lex chose to abandon the symbol and identity of Superman altogether, no longer interested in working with Superman or his allies. Not long after this, Luther was recruited by Brainiac to combat beings called the Omega Titans. The experience, which was the direct result of the Justice League creating a hole in the Source Wall, an important barrier that envelops the known multiverse, led Luther into discovering he was still heavily associated with the force of entropy, as was the Earth and humanity itself. This seemed to have a profound effect on Lex Luthor. He officially left the Justice League, having already distanced himself from the team, and appeared to have gained a new perspective on Earth and its future, viewing his time with the Justice League as ultimately meaningless. He dismantled his mother box and used the energy to travel through time. Learning about the changes the hole in the source wall had brought to the world, and the secrets its crumbling infrastructure had unlocked. Discovering much of this information was apparently already documented by his father, Lionel Luther, in a hidden lab located in Kansas. With these discoveries, Luther decided to recruit a new team of villains he called the Legion of Doom. They attacked a fortress controlled by the powerful immortal known as Vandal Savage, revealing that Luther set this whole fortress up to be the Legion of Doom's new headquarters. Luther executed Vandal Savage on the spot, and has begun his own plans for dealing with the rapidly deteriorating Source Wall. Luther believes this situation presents an opportunity to access forces the Source Wall previously had locked away, and specifically picked out the members of his legion to harness these energies. He mobilized his team of villains to gain these powers for themselves, such as granting Gorilla Grodd access to the Still Force, a strange counterpart to the Speed Force, and connecting Sinestro to a new Lantern Core based on ultraviolet light. As for Luther, he managed to take direct control of Superman's body by shrinking himself down and invading it from within, while the Joker similarly took over the hero called the Martian Manhunter. The two used these powerful bodies to make a direct approach towards the Source Wall's energy, which had found itself on Earth. This attempt to seize this power for himself failed, and Luther and the Legion of Doom were defeated by the Justice League. In response, Luther has been forced to seek out a new ally in order to find further answers into this mysterious new source of power. A version of Batman from a dark world, 
known as the Batman who laughs. In the city of Shanghai, Keenan Kong lived with his father, who worked as a mechanic. Kong lost his mother when he was only 12 after she perished in a plane crash. Her death had a profound effect on the boy, and he grew up resentful about the circumstances behind her death, while Keenan became selfish and arrogant. By the time he turned 17, Kong took to bullying Luo Lixin, the son of China Southeast Airlines CEO, who owned the plane that Keenan's mother had died on. One day, Luo was attacked by a supervillain. Kong stood his ground and attacked the villain, forcing him to free Luo and retreat. After being interviewed by a reporter named Blaney Lan, Kong was noticed by a secret government organization known as the Ministry of Self-Reliance. Believing the teenager possessed the qualities of a hero based on the incident with Luo, they offered him the powers of Superman, the most powerful superhero in the world. Kanan accepted, though he tried to back out when he realized the procedure would be dangerous. Nevertheless, he was exposed to a large amount of energy the life force of a dead Kryptonian. The procedure rendered the young man unconscious. Keenan was empowered with this life energy known as Ki, and in doing so gained powers on a level comparable to Superman. He could fly, generate heat beams with his eyes, had super breath, had enhanced hearing, speed and strength, and possessed x-ray vision. Solar energy would empower him, while Kryptonite would weaken him, though to a lesser extent than a real Kryptonian. Keenan Kong woke up with his new powers triggering, destroying a containment pod he had been placed in. Once he was subdued by other individuals empowered by the Ministry, Keenan was informed by the head of this organization, Dr. Omen, that he would be kept here and would be expected to cooperate with the government and work with them on their new team of heroes, the Justice League of China. Keenan was successful in helping on his first mission with the team, defeating a villain known as Sunbeam after he was hit with a blast of his powers which are rooted in sunlight and thus empowered him. Upon this victory, Lainey Land showed up with the news crew, and on national television, Keenan revealed his identity and his role as the new Superman, as well as the existence of the Justice League of China. This news made waves around the world, while Dr. Omen harshly punished Keenan by blasting him with kryptonite, in retaliation for exposing her entire organization to the world. The whole experience did bring Keenan closer to the other two heroes of the Institute though, and Keenan soon became friends with Batman and Wonder Woman. The three began operating as heroes based around Shanghai. Keenan even began to earn the respect of Dr. Omen, who he convinced to let him return home and speak to his father about what happened to him. It was then that Keenan learned his father, Zong Dan, was a rogue operative known as a freedom fighter who had long stood against the Chinese government in the name of freedom and democracy. His father convinced Keenan to abandon the League and work to help the freedom fighters. However, in the field, one of the fighters used a series of star organisms to take control of Batman and Wonder Woman, much to Zong Dan's astonishment. After all, using mind control in the name of democracy was a deeply hypocritical move. Keenan and Zong Dan turned on the fighters, but Superman's powers, at this point, unstable and unreliable, vanished at a critical moment, nearly killing the young man. Zong Dan was able to save his son by rushing him to the Ministry of Self-Reliance. They were able to save Keenan with a massive blast of solar radiation, though Dr. Omen was unwilling to trust Keenan's father. She let him go after he insisted he could help stop the rest of the Freedom Fighters, but not before hitting him with a compliance device, saying she expected him to surrender when all of this was over. Father and son were able to free the Justice League, who the Freedom Fighters used to hijack a commercial plane. The League worked together to fight both the Freedom Fighters and another Chinese superhero team known as the Great Ten in order to save the aircraft and the people on board. This victory did not come without a cost, however, and Keenan's father was killed in the battle. Now, with both of his parents having been killed on different accidents involving a plane, Keenan was left devastated. However, this time, the grief and overall experience had changed the young man for the better. Keenan began getting a new sense of responsibility and desire to act for the goodwill of the people much like his father did. Before he died, Zong Dan said the ministry was responsible for Keenan's mother being killed, going so far as to say he had proof. Wonder Woman, real name Peng Delian, and Batman, 
real name Wang Baishi, both agreed to look into this matter, and the three swore that from now on they'd decide what to do based on what was right, even if it meant breaking ministry protocol. Keenan agreed to play along with the ministry for now, but swore he would get revenge on whoever killed his mother. Meanwhile, Dr. Omen was able to use the compliance device to retrieve Zongdan's body, and declared that thanks to this device she'd be able to bring him back. She would do anything for the man she loves. With a growing public presence, Superman and the Justice League found themselves the face of a new and prolific team of heroes. Lex Luthor sponsored a major event celebrating the team during a visit to Shanghai, personally presenting awards to the heroes. At the suggestion of an operative of the Ministry, Keenan began training under a martial artist named Master Ai Ching, with an effort to improve his overall combat prowess but also potentially find a way to stabilize his powers for good. Ai Ching was a tough master but saw the potential for heroism in the young man, especially after he witnessed it firsthand. He began to advise Keenan on matters concerning the trigrams of Taoism, and a way forward for the hero. Keenan learned to deal with the grief of losing his parents and to find inner focus, and control over his powers began to improve. It was then that the true purpose of Luther's visit to Shanghai was revealed. He had managed to contact the Ministry of Self-Reliance, and they agreed to send Keenan along as a security consultant for a trip back to America, in an effort for the government branch to build ties with one of the most influential companies in the world. Keenan reluctantly set out, with Ai Ching accompanying him and providing translation for Luther. In a misguided experiment, Luther had Keenan open a portal to what turned out to be a hell dimension, resulting in Superman arriving to save the day. The two Supermen were able to close the portal together, while Keenan rejected Luther's offer for further help in stabilizing his powers. The event had secured the Man of Steel's respect for Kong, and Superman offered the young man some advice before returning him home. Keenan would work with Superman again during a dimensional incursion from another universe, and Superman would come to view Keenan as a reliable and powerful ally he could count on in a moment of crisis. The Hell Portal had also attracted the attention of Avery Ho, a speedster who joined the Justice League of China as their Flash. The growing league continued protecting their home, including against a threat called Superman Zero, an older Superman doppelganger that threatened to conquer all of China when Dr. Omen nearly fell to her death when Superman Zero attacked the Ministry headquarters. Keenan, who discovered his father was being held by the Ministry, demanded Omen tell him the truth about what she did to his family before he would save her. As she began to fall, Omen revealed she was Keenan's mother. Superman Zero snatched the woman in midair, so Keenan rallied with the Justice League to free his parents. The team was successful, but the attack had earned the attention of the Suicide Squad, who killed Superman Zero with a kryptonite sword wielded by Deadshot. They attacked Superman, but he was saved by the Great Ten and the rest of the Justice League. Keenan recovered back at the Ministry, where Omen explained that her identity as his mother was a cover to spy on Zong Dan's freedom fighters. When she was called back into the Ministry, she faked the death of her persona and abandoned the family. Her making Keenan Superman was out of a lingering affection for the boy, to a degree as she thought of no better way to ensure his safety than making him one of the most powerful heroes on the planet, admitting that not all of her time with the family was fake and she did truly care for both Keenan and Zong Dan in her own way. With little other choice, Zong Dang and Keenan grew to accept this story for what it was, and the concept of continuing to function as a family, however strange it might be. Later, Keenan was drawn into an operation being worked on by Deathstroke, and the assassin proved adept at using Keenan's own key-based abilities against the hero. Nevertheless, Keenan was able to aid in subduing the man, who was ultimately imprisoned in Arkham Asylum. On another occasion, Supergirl also sought out advice for Keenan about controlling her powers. He introduced Kara to Ai Ching, who trained the two together before they were called into action. The heroes worked together to defeat the villain and help the people of Shanghai, while the whole experience seemed to afford Supergirl a degree of insight into understanding herself, her past, and her own abilities. As the Justice League of China continued operating, they were accidentally drawn into conflict with the Justice League. Keenan and his friends were no match for the experienced heroes, but they were only lightly reprimanded for their reckless behavior in the conflict. Most members of the League got along well together, while Avery already knew Barry Allen. He was the one who trained her into using the Speed Force to begin with. 
Following this near conflict, the Justice League was able to stabilize Kanan's powers once and for all. It did result in a number of demigods being summoned to this realm, and it took the combined power of both Justice Leagues to save the day. Kanan was left altered by the event, becoming the living embodiment of the principles of Yin and Yang, after Ai Ching passed these abilities on to him. These new abilities greatly altered the nature of Kenan. He became robustly imbued with the diagrams of Taoism and magic itself, the true extent of which, to this day, he does not fully understand. He also became highly resistant, if not outright immune, to many forms of external magical attacks and effects. The Ministry, meanwhile, became dissatisfied with the loyalty of their Justice League, and began investing in creating their own version of the Green Lantern Corps under their direct control. The new corps came into conflict with the Justice League, who went rogue and attacked them, while they found themselves a new ally, Kwang Jo, an Aquaman from the seas of North Korea. Together this team was able to reach a detente with the corps, while Keenan was able to find further understanding over his new magical abilities, bringing the Justice League of China closer together than ever, and made the group intent on becoming China's greatest superhero team. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Here is where I would normally talk about alternate versions of Superman, but Joey's actually made two videos about alternate incarnations of Superman and his favorite versions of them, and you can check out the first part of that right here. That's about it, and thanks again for watching. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.